Hi. Um, I got a whole box full of neat stuff from China today. Um, I bought a whole bunch of stuff that's mostly less than five dollars. Actually, mostly less than three. Uh, some of it less than two dollars a piece. Um, don't know exactly how much this thing cost, but it, I'm sure it was less than two dollars. Uh, this is a, a little keypad, um, and eh, I'm sure that uh, you can think of a lot of projects where you might use something like this. A uh, little security keypad or uh, just whatever you think of. Uh, I thought I'd go through how you interface with this thing. This is what's known as a matrix keyboard. Uh, if you notice, there's seven wires coming out of this thing. Uh, there, there's a wire hooked to each row, and there's a wire hooked to each column. And when you press a key, it shorts that row to that column. And you read these by hooking all of those, all of those wires up to digital I/O pins, and then uh, scanning through. Uh, Here's here's what this thing looks like. I just took a voltmeter and uh, connected up to the various pins here, and started just probing around and poking buttons until I figured out what was going on. Um, so this is what's going on. Um, there's four in a row hooked to the four rows, and the next three are hooked to the columns. I've uh, attached those to these digital I/O pins, and then I've written some code. Uh, and see up here, I'm defining what what rows or what pins I've hooked each thing to, and I'm just using serial I/O again, just to just to uh, output so that we can tell what's going on. Um, all the loop does is it's just uh, again we're going to be calling this thing like a hundred times a second. And we need to confirm that uh, we're, every time we read it, we want to see, like, okay, one is pressed, but one was pressed last time. That just means that it's still pressed down. We don't want to register it again. Uh, so it just it only registers keys when the key changes from the last time we read a key. Um, and so it just calls this function, which I define, called read key. And then down here, We've set some stuff up in the first. So we set up an array of rows, row one, two, three, four, and column one, two, three. Um, and then these are the characters that you find at each one of those positions. Uh, so characters uh, one, two, three in the first row, four, five, six in the second, seven, eight, nine, star zero, pound. Now here's what we're doing. We are setting the columns. We're going to scan through the rows. So we're going to have the column set as input and we're going to uh, enable the pull-ups on the columns uh, so that on the Arduino, inside the Arduino ch or the at Mega chip, uh, it'll attach little resistors so that these columns will read one if nothing's going on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to one row at a time, we're going to turn on that pin that drives that row as output and set it to zero. And what that will do then is um, if I'm pressing that key, that zero will short to this column and pull that that uh, column's uh, input pin down. So you can see here that's what happens. Um, first we're going to set, just to be sure, we're going to set all the uh, rows to input pins. Uh, setting them, even though we're using them as output, we don't want to drive them either high or low because one of the one of the downsides to to uh, input devices like this is that the rows and columns can interfere with one another. So you want to only be scanning one row at a time. You can you might also have guessed by now that if you press two keys at once, you're going to get weird outputs. The way I'm scanning it. Um, if you press two keys on different rows, the first row is, you know, if I press three and five, you're going to get three every time. Um, if you press two on different in, in the same row, uh, as I, since I'm scanning across, you're going to get the first. If I five, press five and six, you'll get five every time. 
Um, so I set them to input. Uh, this is something we didn't cover before and something I actually didn't know until I just looked it up in the documentation. There's actually an input pull-up uh, keyword that you can uh, you can run and uh, that sets it to input and enables the pull-up. Uh, then I set all the rows to input just so that they're not driving any current at all, either high or low. And I go through each row, I set the uh, pin mode to output and I set it to zero so that's running running the output low and then I scan through and read the value uh, as soon as I find a value of zero um, hey there's a press key and I return it immediately and that's out of this thing that we found that we had up here before uh, as soon as I scan through all the columns uh, I, and I didn't find anything pressed I need to set that column back into input. Um, I don't want to pull up here. Um, I, I don't want to be driving anything at all on that. So that clears the way for the next r row to be uh, used as uh, output. If I get all the way through all the rows and never found a key, then I return a zero, which tells the caller that, hey, there's nothing pressed, which is where I say if cur key is not equal to zero up here, then print out the value. So we're using uh, serial debugging again. Um, let me see. I will plug in the thing here. I've already got part of the code. Um, so I will turn on the serial monitor. And we come over here. And if I press the 1 here, I should get 1 there. I'll press it a few times. Press 2, 3, Four, four. Oh, four's not working. Well, trust me, it was working. I probably have bumped loose that the the wire that was hooked to that column. Um, you know, my fiddling around here. Um, there it goes. Yeah, I wiggled the wires back a little bit more, and they work. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star zero pound. Press 8 a bunch of times. I can press keys a bunch of times, and there we go. So it's working. We can uh, use this in our next project now.